the sign law and the ambiguous case. What does ambiguous case mean anyway? In this video, I'm going to show you how the sign law works, a quick review from grade 10, and then we're going to talk about this ambiguous case with the help of my pizza pan here today. And I'm going to show you how this all works. I'm going to give you a demonstration using some um, manipulatives that I think will help you understand how to figure out how many triangles you can make, which is usually the question that you're being asked. So let's start initially with this, just the sign law from what you did in grade 10. And if you recall, it means that um, in order to use the sign law, first of all, you don't have a right angle triangle. And I'm looking at whether or not I have a pair of sides and angles. And from there, if I wanted to find this side length C, I could use this lovely X pattern. I always tell my students to look for an X and that sets up your ratios. So this would say to me that if I did C over the sine of C, remember this is your um, sine law rule, and I could find side length A over sine A. And as long as I have three of the four pieces of information, I can solve for the fourth. So in this case, I would have C, which I'm trying to solve for. That's okay. I don't have one over the sine of 102 degrees is going to be equal to side A. Remember the sides are labeled opposite the angle. So this is side A and you write it in lowercase numbers, letters. So if I have C over the sine of C equals A, which is 10 in this case, over the sine of 30 degrees. Now using the basic ratio calculation trick called the end thing, I can say that C is going to be equal to the sine of 102 degrees times 10 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And if you do that on your calculator, very simply turn it on. Good idea. So the sine of 102 times 10 divided by the sine of 30, not 3, and I would get about 19.5. Let's change that here. Approximately equal to 19.5 centimeters. So remember your units as well when you're doing calculations so that you can um, show your teacher that you know what you're doing. All right. So I have that side length. Um, now that I have that side length, I could also figure out what this angle is going to be over here. Very simply, you add these two, subtract them from 150 or 180, and then you can find side B as well. So that's how you use the sine law. You probably remember that from grade 10. So problems happen when we have um, a triangle such as this one. In this case, it's side, side, angle. So I'm given this side length, this side length, and I'm given this angle here, side, side, angle, as opposed to angle, angle, side, right? So if you read this backwards, you want to make sure that that's not what you are by forgetting to check for the ambiguous case. So if I wanted to solve for, um, let's say I want to solve for angle B here. So I could still see that this is the sine law and you would get half the marks for doing at least this. But you would miss out on something as well here. Okay, so I've made the X pattern and now I can set up my ratio. And again, you have to remember to label the sides properly. This is angle A, this is side A, side A, right? This is side B, so side B, side A. So I'm going to write out my ratio again. So I would say B over the sine of B. Notice the angles are in capitals. The side lengths are in lowercase letters. So B over sine B equals A over sine of A. And now I plug things in. So B is 10. The sine of B, sine of B is what I'm trying to solve for. That's my unknown. Side A is 6 and the sine of 25 degrees. So if I want to find sine B, 
I go 10 times this divided by that. That's your lovely little n ratio. So the sine of b is going to be 10 times sine 25 degrees divided by 6. So let's do that on a calculator. So we have 10 times the sine of 25 degrees. And I'm going to divide the whole thing by 6. And that gives me the ratio. Remember, this is the ratio. This is not a side length, obviously. So if you get something with a bunch of decimals, you know you're not done yet. So angle B is approximately equal to, and I'm going to do second sine second answer, and that's going to give me approximately 44.8 degrees. Okay, so the problem with this is that I think you might be able to see that this side length of 6 could also have been put this way so that these two are the same length, which means that angle B could be either this one or this obtuse angle. And that's where we get into um, the ambiguous case. And I'm going to show you some uh, manipulatives to help you understand that. So the ambiguous case comes about because if we have an acute angle here and we have any length B here, you can see that the first thing I would need to know, if I wanted to know, if I could make a triangle, say this was my side A here. I'll call this side A, right? This is going to be A. This would be my side B. And this would be the vertex C, which is going to move around as I show you some different examples. So if I had this side length, you can see that there's no way that I'm going to be able to make a triangle out of this. It's not going to reach this line, which is not determined. Okay, it could be any length. And if I made that angle a little bigger, you'd see maybe a little more clearly. So I can't make a triangle with this. The shortest distance from a point to a line is always the perpendicular distance. So if I can figure out this shortest length that I can make, I can tell you how, how short or how long does this side have to be if I hold this angle steady. If I hold this angle steady, how long does this side have to be? And I'm going to show you that again in a second. Now the other option is, let's say my side A is as big as this side or bigger, you can see that I can only make one triangle out of it. It would go like that. I can't bring it around because if I did, it would be, it's the same length as this one. So the only thing I can make is an isosceles triangle. Similarly, if this side length was even longer, you can see that I can still only make one possible triangle out of this with this being an acute angle. So the problem happens when I have a side length here that is actually longer than this one. So it's a little bit longer, but it's shorter than this big side B. So when I do this, I can make a triangle like that but I could also make a triangle that goes like that. Now, if you remember your sine angles, you know that sine is positive in two quadrants. So in quadrant one, you would have this acute angle. In quadrant two, you would still have a positive sine, which would be this. Now you should also note that when it is here, or if I put it over here, the same length, if I put it here, this makes an isosceles triangle. So whatever this angle is here, it's going to be the same as this one, which means this angle here will be 180 minus that angle. So 180 degrees minus whatever this angle B is. And that would give me the obtuse angle. So we'd have two possible angles an obtuse and an acute. So let's go back to this question here. As you can see, we had 44.8 and this side length 
was smaller than this side length. The question is, what would be this length here? So I said it had to be bigger than this one, but smaller than this. So let's call this the height of the triangle. And if I asked you to calculate this height, you know this angle, you know this side length. So that means that the sine of 25 degrees is going to be equal to the height divided by 10. So the height is going to be 10 times the sine of 25 degrees. That is going to be the shortest length of side A that you can use to make a triangle. So if I do 10 times the sine of 25 degrees, you see that that minimum height would be approximately 4.2 centimeters. So because this side length here, which is 6, is bigger than this, but smaller than B, that means we can make two triangles, two triangles, and this is the ambiguous case. We've shown that there are two possible solutions. And that makes you happy and no more confused. Okay, so let's take a look at the four possibilities. So in the first case, if my side A is smaller than B sine A, so let's make a quick sketch here. So this is A, this is B. And remember that B sine A, this is just the height, right? B sine A. So um, let me just make that clear again here. So if I drew this and I said, how long is this height? This is A, this is my B, this is C. So height, the sine of A would be height divided by, this is side B, so the height over this opposite over hypotenuse, right? So sine of A is H over B. So that means that H is equal to B sine A. Just thought maybe I better clear that up first. So if I said A is less than B sine A, that means my side length here, A, is shorter than this perpendicular. So that would mean it would look like this, right? I'd have something like this. I can't make a triangle. So that means no triangle can be made. No triangle, it's too short. Now the second case is that A is equal to B sine A. In other words, side A is equal to the height when we drop the perpendicular. So this time we have B sine A. This would be a 90 degree angle. And so this is side A is equal to the distance, the minimum distance to make a triangle. So you get one angle. So one triangle, one solution. If A is greater than B, that was what I just showed you with my little toothpicks here. So if I have a side length like this, so we're talking about the sides here now. So this is A, this is B. And if my side A, which is over here, is bigger than that one, I'm going to have to extend this line or it's not going to fit. Now remember, they can be of different. This bottom line can be of any length. So if I made it like this, you can see again, oops, I should have continued it all the way out. I can only make one triangle. I can't swing this thing back this way. It won't go. So gain one triangle. The problem happens, and this is where you see the ambiguous case, when you have something that's in between the length of side B and the height which is the minimum height of a bright triangle at this point. So for this acute angle, the minimum length, again, which is B sine A, this is B sine A here, right? This is B sine A. And 
This is side A. This would be my B. And this is C. So if I took this, if I had one that was a little bit longer than this height, so let's say I come out like this, this line is shorter than this side length, and so I can make another triangle in here. And that is the ambiguous case. I hope that helps you out. Um, if it did, drop me a little note, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe, and hopefully these little toothpick examples will help you understand more clearly the ambiguous case. Bye for now.